Little Library's Big Heroes by Miranda Paul, illustrated by John Potta. Little Library's Big Heroes. For thousands of years, people have loved stories about heroes, mythical heroes, historical heroes, and even ordinary heroes. Like this guy, Todd. Pretty ordinary, right? Here's kid Todd pretending to be a superhero. In school, he didn't feel heroic, even though his mother had been a teacher who loved books, reading was difficult for him. He was often scolded for asking too many questions and was told that he wasn't a good student. Tom's mom disagreed. She told him he was gifted and had something big to offer the world. You could do anything, she said. He hoped she was right. Todd studied hard, graduated from school, and got a job. At work, Todd discovered that he liked helping others. But then his mother died, and he became the one who needed help to get through sad times. He missed her terribly. Memories of his mom teaching neighborhood kids how to read gave Todd an idea. He cut up an old door and hammered the pieces together to make a tiny one-room schoolhouse. He stacked books inside, nailed a sign on the front door, and placed the little library on his lawn. Now he could share his mother's love of reading with anyone who passed by. There was just one problem. Very few people passed by. One day during a rummage sale, Todd's neighbors spotted his creation. What a neat idea. Did you build that yourself? Why did you make it? Todd told them about his mom. People loved his story. It reminded them of ordinary heroes they knew. Soon, neighbors who had never met before were gathered around chatting like old friends. They grabbed books, they gave books, the little library became the center of their neighborhood. Todd felt his nifty box of books had potential. He called up his friend Rick, who was always chock full of grand ideas. Rick thought that they could build thousands of little boxes, like Andrew Carnegie, who once built 2,510 libraries. They could take trips like Ludy Stearns, who brought traveling libraries all over Wisconsin. Wait a minute, Todd said. Andrew Carnegie had been a wealthy businessman and Ludy Stearns was a trained librarian. The two of them were just ordinary guys and they were particularly low on cash. How many libraries could two ordinary guys create? How far could ordinary people spread an idea? They agreed on one thing, they wanted to find out. For months, they salvaged designs, sawed and painted. They learned important skills such as how to recycle a barn, how to pick out a, sil how to pick out a sliver, and how to convince family members that sawing and painting were fun. The team lined up their finished masterpieces and waited for the crowds, but crowds didn't come. Only one person bought a little library. The freshly built library sat and sat. The team spirits withered as they waited. Books are filled with great ideas they knew, but those ideas could only spread if people actually read them. So Todd and Rick decided that if people wouldn't come get the libraries, they'd bring the libraries to the people. Out they went with 30 tiny libraries, planting them like seeds between Madison, Chicago, and Minneapolis. Just like at the rummage sale, folks gathered around. Curiosity lured readers to the little boxes. They borrowed and shared books. Friends and neighbors talked with other friends and neighbors who talked with more friends and neighbors about the books they'd read and where they'd gotten them. It was working. The seeds of Todd and Rick's ideas were beginning to grow. A radio interview spread the word about little free libraries all around Wisconsin. Then a national TV show featured their idea. 
The whole country seemed to be buzzing about the tiny but anything but ordinary libraries. Over the next year, 400 little libraries sprang up across the United States. Each library needed a caretaker called a steward. Stewards were ordinary citizens. Some were even kids. Many of them wouldn't stay ordinary though. They became community heroes. After Hurricane Katrina devastated her hometown of New Orleans, a six-year-old girl named Nikki collected nearly 2,000 books. She gave a box of books to every free little library in the city. She wrote a letter to Todd and Rick's organization asking for a little library of her own, and she got one. Nikki took some of her favorite books inside, and people have been checking out stories from it ever since. In El Paso, near the U.S.-Mexico border, reading programs were short on money. A librarian named Mrs. Lopez placed the first little free library in Texas at an elementary school there. With her students' help, the idea spread to more than 50 locations around the city. Soon, families had access to more books in English and Spanish. In western Uganda, volunteers set up a primary school and a little free library within a refugee camp. The women, men, and children who lived there had escaped great violence and had been forced to leave their most of their possessions behind. Some of them learned to read from magazines and picture books they found inside the tiny library. As the library spread around the world, more tales of ordinary heroes emerged. From within a Wisconsin prison, along a hiking trail in Canada, and cities across Brazil. Stewards placed little free libraries at a hospital in Ireland on a street corner in Pakistan, outside a house in South Korea, near a schoolyard in South Sudan. Today, thousands of ordinary and creative heroes are bringing millions of free books to their friends and neighbors. Today, those friends and neighbors will share them with other friends and neighbors. Today, books will be loved, big ideas will spark, and tomorrow, who knows? Tomorrow you might, tomorrow might bring another hero story written by you and shared with the whole wide book-loving world. <laughs>